Hi, Sarah. We are so excited to have you on the show today. Stephanie and I feel so fortunate that we had the privilege of visiting your Vitalist Test Kitchen a few weeks ago, and we had this delicious vegan meal that you created. We had great conversation, and it was just, it was such a fun experience, and we could not wait to have you back and to have this conversation on our show and share with our listeners everything that you're doing. Thank you for having me on your show today. It's nice to see you two again. And this is super exciting for me. What an exciting time I'm in with Vitalist. So Sarah, in a nutshell, we would really love to hear your story and how you got involved in the vegan food space and really came to understand the concept that food heals the body. And I feel like you kind of came into that before it became pretty mainstream. Yeah. Um, yes, that's true. So around 20 years old, I, um, I actually was introduced to the vegan diet and it wasn't quite a fit for me. It was, um, full of gluten and soy and corn. And I actually, it turns out they cause inflammation and I was having an allergic reaction, but I, but in that process, I sort of developed a a caring about the idea of eating plants and more of a sustainable future and what that meant um, for the body and for the body healing. And so I took a journey into the raw food scene and um, it was an underground scene at the time in Los Angeles. And I I was fortunate to meet Dr. David Jubb at that time, who was kind of a foremost expert on liver cleansing. And so so becoming a raw food chef and working in liver cleansing sort of became my my niche area. And um, I ended up working in Hollywood with celebrities on like refining their diet during filming and working in Silicon Valley with CEOs on this. And about 2017, I launched Vitalist Food. And again, I had another health crisis. And in 2020, I developed lymphoma. And so I had to heal myself again. And that's how I kind of ended up in Minneapolis. And we're relaunching here, which started in November. So we've launched at, um, we've done a little light launch locally. Well, that's quite a story. You know, just from where you've been and how your own health issues have you know, culminated and you healing yourself and now launching a company to heal others. What's something, you know, I guess just before we even dive into all this, did you know you always wanted to be like in raw food or a chef or, you know, into vegan cuisine? Like I know the pivotal point was when you were healing yourself, but is that something that you always aspired to? So I, I actually, I'm, I'm like fashion drawn, like that's kind of my, my area of like love and passion and, um, and storytelling. And so, no, I had no idea that I was going to end up being a vegan raw food chef. And, and, um, it, it, it sort of like fell on my lap. Like there was like no way to avoid it. I thought I was going to waitress in this restaurant and like learn how to make the food and like eat a little bit better and, and like keep pursuing my writing career and my fas- fashion career. And it just kept drawing me more and more in. Like, I think when, when you have a path in life or a mission in life, it, you cannot stop it. And if you are, you're resisting and you're, you know, creating like a problem actually. And I think, I sort of think like, some of what happened to me in the recent years was kind of that, that I was a little off path, like three degrees, like three degrees. If you're going to Mars, you're going to end up somewhere else. And, you know, in my life, I was like maybe three degrees in the wrong direction. And, and I ended up sick, but I had no idea I was going to become a vegan raw food chef. And, you know, it's, what's interesting about it is I've always been creative. And even as a kid, I like, didn't want to follow the recipe. I wanted to make, like make something new and pick flowers and see how the flowers went into things. And I loved exploring nature. So it's, it's kind of amazing, like the clues that I was given as a child. And then even I was sharing recently with somebody else, but like, even when I came off the ADD medicine, it's like, you're kind of addicted to speed. And that's the only way really to put it. And I'd been on it for 10 years and I really didn't know myself or how to live. And generally somebody in that kind of state would go into like an AA program or some sort of program to learn how to like live life without substances or something. And instead the lady whose house I ended up at, um, she, her name was velvet. And she said, Sarah, you need to go to yoga. And like, literally like in two days I knew like, Oh, this is for me. Fashion's over. Like this is my path. And, and every, every, you know, year it's become more and more clear and And there was like a little time point when I was like, I can't do this anymore. When I launched Clear Cafe in Bali, Indonesia with my friend Black in 2009 and 2010, we launched it. And, and I had changed the menu a little bit. There was like fish and beans and, and milkshakes and stuff that he wanted on the menu there. And I got confused. 
And I went to a film program. That's kind of how I landed in San Francisco. You know, it was, that was like, the, there was this one little glitch in the middle where I wasn't quite sure. And then I was like working in hedge funds and things where people wanted meat in their diet. So kind of like, there's a little, there's like a bit of the story where I was off track and I feel like finally I'm like really back on track and clear on the vision and the R and D has been done like six years of R and D have gone into this company. And, you know, so like right now I'm as clear as I've ever been on, on the business and it's really a 25 year process to get me to where it is right now. Wow. And it, you know, as I'm listening to you talk about your path, it really doesn't sound like you had a glitch in the middle. It sounds like that was almost part of your journey. And you needed to do those things to get you where you are today, right? So I don't think it was a glitch, <laughs> in uh, my I, opinion. Yeah, but, it, you're right. You're right, Marnie. I think it's it's more like it's the learning curve and it's the understanding. And even right now, I'm I'm sort of writing a menu for another restaurant that has that includes things like meatballs and other things to to like and and that's fun for me too because I really get. After, you know, my learning curve, I've learned a lot about cuisine. You know, I studied with a, I understudied a a French chef in San Francisco for three years. And so, you know, I've had a lot of experience really learning about other things. And occasionally I'll throw somebody a dinner party that, you know, brings me in and I'll throw them a nice dinner party and they can have whatever they want. That's like within my um, area of expertise, but where it's like we throw meat in, but it's still like highly plant-based focused. I'm amazed by all the things that you've done. And some someday offline, I'd love to hear about all your Bali adventures because that just sounds so cool. Stephanie, yes. go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to say, I mean, Marnie, you and I got to experience firsthand and both of us eat a largely plant-based diet. I mean, we both eat meat, meat and fish, but we're very open to eating this way. It was raw. The flavors were delicious. You know, I've had some other just like vegetarian or vegan food. That's fine. But I was blown away by the presentation, the creativity that you use, clearly you have a skill. And from all these experiences that you've had training under French chefs and raw chefs and all this um, with your travels, it's culminated in this like amazing experience that you can provide for people. And we'll get into more of that. But I just want to say like for any skeptics out there, anyone who's listening, they're like raw, vegan, hell no. Um, I'm here to say hell yes. So And by the end of this conversation, I'm sure that you're going to be like, you know, all in, all in, at least to try it. Not that you have to do this hundred percent, but being open to trying. And I know you're going to dive in Sarah and explore with our listeners more about the why behind it. Well, also what, what you just said and what Marnie sort of referenced in the, in the comment right before that is that because I've traveled a lot around the world for um, work, I've worked all over the world, Dubai, Jeddah, London, Spain, I mean, Bali, you know, in different cities. And so, um, and, and then my clients are like, go eat at this restaurant, taste the things and then make, bring it home and make it vegan. Right. So, so a lot of what I have done over the years is like, how do I make food dense enough that, and flavorful enough that somebody doesn't even think like, where, where's the steak or where's the chicken or where's the, um, for example, I, and it, which I was sharing with you is we we make a, um, a walnut mushroom taco and we were serving it at the Silicon Valley Blockchain Society, which is like, it's a private salon that that is very man dominated in San Francisco. And for two and a half years, we like serve these tacos and no one ever said like, where's the meat? I'm full, you know, and they actually would come to me and they're like, we, we always are excited to come to the salon because we know you're bringing in like your special food and the only thing we don't like is that the kale gets stuck in our teeth. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. With that's spinach. true. Yeah, that's very. <laughs> well, I, Marty and I both brought our leftovers from the lunch home and our husbands got to enjoy it. And my husband, who's a, a foodie, I will say, thought it was delicious. Thought everything was delicious. So also, I would say my daughter, my so my husband and daughter love the food and just going back to what Stephanie was saying about trying raw and vegan, like I don't, I, I eat pretty plant-based, but like the idea of just eating a raw food meal, especially in the winter, like doesn't totally appeal to me in all honesty. And when we came, I had a little bit of skepticism in my own head when we came to your test kitchen and the food was nourishing, it was filling, it was delicious. Like 
all of my preconceived ideas were pretty much blown out of the water. So you're doing something right. <laughs> yeah, I try to, I, I actually really try to stay away from calling it raw vegan or any like super category because, and that's why we re- reference it as superfood. Um, really it's elevated nutritional cuisine and, and it's made in a way that's easy to digest. It's symbiotic. Each ingredient works together. Um, organically and naturally, we use organic ingredients, non-GMO, you know, micronutrient rich, enzyme rich, but we, d- we do this in a way, I do this in a way that it doesn't, it doesn't fit into the category of vegan and raw or something like you don't, you don't, nobody wants to go in and eat a cold thing in the middle of winter. And so, and it's not completely raw. Like we do put some cooked rice and we put some cooked things through it. And sometimes we even heat the the dishes up to like 130 degrees or, you know, we do things like that. Um, so it's not, it's, it's, it's really just a new, a new experience of food that, you know, can fit into like 13 categories. Like we're paleo, you know, it, there's just a lot of categories we fit into and it's, and it's really, it's it's almost dangerous for the brand to get pigeonholed into a I'm a raw vegan, you know, and because it because it, it uh, limits the thoughts about what it actually is. And so we really try to reference it as elevated nutritional cuisine because that's sort of what it is. It's like, it, you know, it's like going to a nice restaurant and you get some specialized food on the plate and and sort of more like that. OK, I love that name. I remember you mentioning that when we had lunch, elevated nutritional cuisine. So let's dive in and talk about how, how is it elevated? You know, you came up with this brand, Vitalist Foods, and you have, you know, kind of grab and go type of options with like the unicorn balls and the different beverages and which we've tried a a bunch of them, right? Like the shizzle and the chia cacao nut milk and the vanilla bean nut milk and the kale chips and all that good stuff. How is this food line different from others on the market that are similar that maybe, you know, maybe they call themselves vegan, but they're not necessarily elevated nutritional cuisine? Okay, let's start with the um, first first point is that um, overall, we're, we de- generally stick completely to organic food and then we stick to non-GMO. So um, we don't have wheat and corn and soy overall in our company. Now, I, I when I say that, it's a blanket statement because we do use tamari occasionally, which does have soy in it. Um, but we don't. We're not. We're not making tofu burgers or gluten burgers or corn chips. Instead of corn chips, we use um, flax and chia, and we make sort of like a gazpacho almost soup that then um, goes through this cracker process that we dehydrate these crackers. And so, and then that brings us to like number three, which is we use ingredients that are symbiotic. So uh, we wouldn't take a banana and a kale and a protein powder and a nut and put it into a drink and blend it up and say, this is new. In general, we, we focus on what's symbiotic, what goes together, what fits best in nature. We also think about what the micronutrients are. So for example, like we make a unicorn nut milk and we use ashwagandha in it and maca. And we think about like, what are these and put it into a nut milk. And so the, the, it makes, it's our called our unicorn nut milk really. And, and really it's um the, those, these adaptogenics go well together. And uh, this is electrolyte lemonade. This is one of my signature products. And and I can even like share how you can make it at home, right? But this is something we make for you. And um, essentially it's whole lemon, apple, olive oil, sea salt, lemon, ginger, and, and charged water. And this, this product right here breaks the blood brain barrier. What that means is that the nutrition can be absorbed immediately in through the lymphatic system. So a lot of people have, have gut issues and they don't have the friendly bacteria anymore. Some people are sick and they just can't digest anything and they can't get something in this thing right away with the salt and the olive oil goes, breaks the blood brain barrier and can be absorbed into the cells quickly. So quickly you can feel rehydrated, regenerated, uplifted. And, and really our food is really an educational system. So like everything we're doing is like an education, not only for your brain, if you read about it, but actually for your body, my body knows like when I, when it even smells this now, it's like, it reacts. It's like super excited. It knows that it's going to feel hydrated and uplifted quickly. So like, and I, I do liver flushing on, on the regular, which we were kind of discussing, but where I drink olive oil and I have no resistance. Like I actually, like when the, when I start cutting the grapefruit and pouring the olive oil, my body actually is like great starts craving it. Cause I've, I've done it so many times and it, it knows like it gets a reward out of it. I don't feel nauseous, anything like the original effects when you start it. 
So, so that's like another thing. It's like, it's an educational system. We also, by, by doing a high raw content in our food, we have a high enzyme content and enzymes are now, are super imperative for digestion. And a lot of food on the market is overcooked, overprocessed. The vegan diet specifically has a high amount of processed food and it's high in these like inflammatory foods. And so we try to keep the inflammation foods low and the enzymes high. So even if we do make cooked food, we, we cover it in about at least 51% of um, living food. And my teacher called it life food, which is where we do use honey and we use um, some hot water and we may, we may blanch or we may lightly toast foods. So, um, and we don't use any of the runaway starches in general. Sometimes I use beets. Like there's a, there's like, sometimes I do, but usually not like bananas, corn, dates, beets, corn, wheat, some of the, a lot of the grains, we kind of keep them low. And like when we work with the rice in general, like we're conscious about it, not generally a white rice, we would use a black rice we or maybe a brown rice. And often we'll put probiotics in something like when we soak the wild rice, we put probiotics in it. Our drinks have probiotics in them. If we use cashew, we definitely put probiotics in the, in the food. I'm amazed by how much thought you put into each, each item that you're creating. And it sounds to me like you're, I don't want to say you're trying to treat something, but you're, when you're telling me that you're you know, making the symbiotic ingredients. Like that's amazing to me. That's like taking food. I feel like a step further and not a lot of people are doing that. And, you know, when I hear lemonade, I think sugar, I think high calories, you're not getting anything good out of it. And here you are creating this lemonade, but really what you're saying is it's doing all this other amazing stuff for your body. And I I just love that. There's so much intention about the food and maybe you can like dive in and talk about maybe a little bit about the science behind it, but really more what I'd love to share with everyone is how this food can help heal. So all this intention that goes into creating these not only delicious, but really healing foods. Yeah. And, um, so in general, like my, my real, my strong background is in liver cleansing and cell rejuvenation cleansing. And that's sort of designed by Dr. David Jubb. And again, it's, it's a, it's a program he would call life food nutrition. And he and his former wife wrote a book called life food recipe book. And that's, that kind of explains the base work of where I come from. And my, my background in doing this and, and electrolyte lemonade is in that book. And like some of the things it's different, it's different than the way I make it, but it's, it's in that book. Anybody can make this at home and, and you just need a blender and you can put these ingredients in the blender and it's not going to taste like mine, but it's going to be something like it. And this, this really benefits your liver. So like in our programs, we generally have somebody like skip, skip breakfast, in general, they, where they would have a, but this isn't necessary, but this would be like the first drink around 11 o'clock and uh, it would be your first meal. And this is actually, and we call it drink. So like people look at it and they're like, oh, there's a juice and it's not, this is not a juice. It's cleared by the FDA is not juice. It's, this is liquid food. It's a, a, a whole lemon. It's a whole apple. It's a whole ginger. It's a whole turmeric. We use honey which is from it. We generally use blackberry honey or tree honey. We, we've been trying out a local honey, but it does have alfalfa in it, which is, I'm not ready for it. So we're going to, we're keep, we're still looking for a local one. Essentially, you know, you're giving yourself a whole food that your body can, it works on your digestion and it flushes your system and oil, the combination of oil and acid through the liver actually kind of gives the liver a little flush. So like this is like this, this right here is the best product I make next to aloe detox and chisel. This product though, like literally is something that actually every day is refreshing your system. And in general, like in my studies and across the board, whenever I've been working with like Alcat tests and celebrities that needed to take an Alcat test, cause we need to find out like what they can't eat. And like, and it can be blueberries, like blueberries are off the list or whatever it is. The electrolyte lemonade and the aloe detox, they're, they're like two of the top drinks to rehydrate and feel to, to really feel, feel your body go into like a, a responsive state quickly in the Alcat test. The number one thing you learn is that you, you should rotate your food. So you shouldn't do something two days in a row. And if you do eat two days in a row, then you want to rest two days. Or like in our, in our practice, we might do a medicine for five days and take two days off and a medicine for five days and take two days off. 
like for example, the bicarb shot, which is an excellent thing anyone can do right now at home, drugstore available, you buy sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda, and you can have a little citrus like uh, lemon, lime, grapefruit, orange, apple cider vinegar, create a little shot, stir it up, take a shot. It benefits digestion, fungus mold and yeast, helps clear. I mean, baking soda is like the miracle food, but these little bicarb shots are like one of the best possible things like medicine you can do at home. But anyways, we, on that program, you only do it five days. You take two days off. So one of the things, like I was saying is like, this is a great drink, but you don't want to do everything every day. You want to actually like whatever it is you're doing, you want to take a day off as often as possible. Like do it one day, take a day off, rotate it in with a different product, then do another day, you know, and then bring it back so that your body doesn't create an allergy to it. And it re- still starts responding like medicine. But it's so interesting you say that because I, Marty and I can administer like a IgG at home functional medicine, food sensitivity testing. And the clients that will, will come to me and say like, they'll show up, say eggs. And they're like, well, I am eating eggs every single day. And there is, I believe that because I've seen it where a lot of times when we do have these high allergy responses, this is IgG, not like not allergy, but food sensitivity. It's because we are eating that food every day. And I never really thought about it, but there's a lot of people that literally like clockwork, like they eat the same breakfast every day or the same lunch. And so why is that? Can you expand on that a little bit more? Well, I I think like if let's just say that something has Well, okay. Everything slightly has a toxin, no matter what we're talking about. Blueberry, everything does something, right? And does something else. So everything's like that. And the more you're doing something over and over again, the body stops being able to treat it like a new, new substance that they're managing, right? So whenever you bring something in new, body's like trying to figure it out, but the body also creates patterns and, and, and has a, the more you do something, the less reactive it is to it. And that means like, if if it has whatever its negative things are, they're they're not being fought off anymore. The immune system stops fighting it. The more we can, the more we can like rotate and shift, and it's just better for the body in general because it generally does create some sort of pattern. And I don't know the exact science behind it, but we've seen it all over the board when I've done these Alcat tests. So it's a very common thing for me to run on my clients when, when I'm working with them directly and privately that will run this Alcat test. And like people can be allergic to blueberries and cake and like, but they can eat steak and lentils and then they can eat Navy beans. You know, it's like, it, it never makes any sense, you know, but, um, it, but when we cut it out and then we do like, we rotate in and we start rotating the foods around, we see massive, massive shifts in health and nutrition. And I, and so I really try to practice, like, there's a couple of things I do daily. And then I try to like, okay, today I'm just not going to do it. And I'm gonna take a week off or something like my green tea, you know, but I, I, in general, it's, it's good to have a practice of just sort of rotating your foods to, to give your, your immune system bigger boost and your body a chance to like actually get the nutrition out of it and have it still be working. Like, Oh, this is something that is really benefiting me. That's, I mean, it makes perfect sense, right? Like it's hard to do when you get into like the habit of, you know, like I have a smoothie every day or whatever it is, but it, it makes perfect sense. So I have two questions for you that are, I guess, not that related, but (laughs) My first question is sugar. You know, I know there's some, there has to be obviously some like natural sugars in these drinks, or I guess they're not drinks, right? You said they're food, liquid foods. Drinks, yeah. um, so I'm wondering if you can talk, a lot of people, you know, are trying to cut out sugar or really limit the amount of sugar in their lives. And I'm wondering if you can speak to the sugar in your food. That's the first question I have. And then the second question is, we, I would love to hear what a few of your favorite products are and why. Okay. Thank you. So um, sugar, is, sugar is obviously a very controversial subject and sugar is not created equal across the board. There's many different types of sugar and there's different reasons why you would want <clears throat> something. And let's not forget, like our, our energy system does run on sugar. Like our body, bodies like to run on sugar. Berries are one of the top foods ever on the planet. They're they're maybe the most perfect human food that exists and they do have sugar. 
they have a natural occurring sugar in, in the fruit and natural occurring sh- fruit, for example, has a water that hasn't been exposed to light or destructed at all. So like the, f- the water inside of fruit and it's sugar water is one of the best possible waters and hydrating elements we can possibly put in our body. So when we blend those up, especially um, we get, we get maximum water benefit and the sugar is a byproduct of this fruit. And we want that sugar. That is good sugar. Even like when you're um, dealing with cancer and things like that, the sugar from inside a fruit is very valuable. White sugar is poison. We all know that white sugar is poison. Brown sugar is poison. Raw sugar, cane sugar, a little better, not great. But processed white sugar is something we do not want to have. And then gluten is a sugar and dairy, it's a sugar. And these sugars are different than when we're talking about honey. Honey, uh, especially from a tree, actually doesn't spike the blood sugar much. 2000 years, you found the same honeycomb and it was put in a jar and sealed. It would look the same as it did now. Honey works as a preservative. And it's a sugar that is beneficial to the body and can be used as a delivery mechanism. So sugar travels through the body and it can go to reach the furthest points in the body. So if you're bringing in something such as gluten with a white sugar and it's traveling throughout your body, you're bringing mold, fungus, and yeast throughout your entire body. When we put honey into electrolyte lemonade, we're bringing turmeric and ginger and lemon and apple through our body. And we're doing beneficial um, electrolyte rebalancing. Honey is a is a sh- uh, is a sugar that has is antimicrobial, antifungal, anti yeast, antibacterial. And so when we put it in, we I historically only used honey. Period. That was it. Tree honey. It has a low glycemic index. It doesn't have alfalfa, which is a double bonded sugar um, that's similar to date or beet. Uh, that can't be split. Cancer is two cells that can't be split. White sugar is two cells that can't be split. Two atoms that can't be split. They're double bonded sugar like this. Doesn't split. Cancer looks something like that. So historically, I only worked with honey, which is a like a fructose sugar similar to that of, of fruit. And I try to stay away from alfalfa and clover honey. And any cooked honey is just as bad as white sugar. Okay. So it's not, you can't, you have to be selective about your honey if you're choosing honey. And we do work with dates, which is also a fruit sugar, but that is a disaccharide sugar. It doesn't split, um, but vegans feel better about it. And maple syrup has a high mineral content. So there's some value in maple syrup, maple syrup and honey, in my opinion, are the best sugars you can possibly be using if you're using an artificial sugar. Maple syrup is the cooked sugar where honey you can get raw and and have and ha- it has all of its enzymes and everything intact. And it's doing massive work on your body. It's going in and it's again, it's a healing agent. Like you can look all over ancient recipes and people are like, take honey with ginger, take honey with lemon, take honey with take honey. So I think when you're when we're talk when we're going down the sugar rabbit hole, fruit, tree honey, those are like the the top of the the line. And then everything else you have to be a little bit moderate about, and even honey and even fruit, you want to be moderate about and consider how you're doing it. When you're doing it, is it cooked or is it raw? Raw raw fruit is valuable. You cook it, you change the sugar. The sugar is now a new sugar. It's sort of like you can think of like an egg. When you cook an egg, it starts one way and then it ends another way. Coagulated protein and like, you know, this is like sugar. When you change, when you add heat to sugar, you have a new product. Wow. That was fascinating, Sarah. Like I had not fully, I mean, we talk a lot about sugar, but I hadn't really heard it explained that way. And I think sometimes, especially the last year or two, you know, it's, we were talking about like your blood sugar and you're like, Oh, you shouldn't have any sugar, even honey and maple syrup. And I was always a big proponent of both of those, just, you know, kind of for the reasons that you articulated. Um, And then we get away from it. And, but then if you think about like all the the ways that it's actually helping, especially when you pair it with the right foods and you're using the right source, you know, our ancestors have been eating honey and maple syrup in moderation and it was seasonal, right? For hundreds and thousands of years. So, and they didn't have the chronic disease and illness that they, that we have today back then. So I think it's also, it's like a good balance and perspective that you just shared extremes in either direction are never good. Right. And I love that you said moderation and doing both the fruit and the honey or the maple syrup in moderation. 
Yeah. And you brought up a very good point though, which is also like, if you think about where we're putting white, and when we're putting white sugar often, or where we're having sugar, it's often paired with something else also that spikes the blood sugar level, gluten and dairy, right? Or, and like, and, and there's nothing really to manage that, that those are runaway sugars, right? And so even like, for example, in the lemonade where we have an apple and we have honey, we have oil and we have fiber. So there's like a whole thing that's going on. That's like helping manage it. And we're using a honey that's like has a low glycemic index and isn't the disaccharide sugar. And it's really the disaccharide sugars that are in grains and other things that really cause the, the insulin levels to go out of the, through the roof for anybody. And where you're like, Oh, I ate pasta last night. I'm starving tomorrow morning. You know, it's like the sugar, the sugar digestion is just, you know, outrageous. So we don't use any gluten and no white sugar. I think that was super helpful for you to break that out. So thank you very much. My pleasure. And and now maybe tell us about some of your favorite products that you offer and why they're your favorites. Right here, I have a <laughs> unicorn ball. This is our chocolate. They're so good. I they're so one. good. I know. <laughs> this is our peanut butter unicorn ball. And um, these these are two of my key products. And sort of, we're, these are going to be found around the city everywhere, like including in the airport soon. And, and the, essentially they're protein nut balls and seed balls. So they have flax seeds, chia seeds, um, ground almond, ground oats. We are, we, I did move it from honey to maple syrup and to maple syrup because I wanted to make it vegan friendly. Cause I keep getting, I get a little backlash for not having some vegan friendly things. And I just thought it's not that it's not that big of a deal in this particular product because it has, it has almond butter and there's, it's like fat, it's fat dominated and protein dominated. And we use the sun warrior protein. So it's really just, a, it just makes, it's just the medicine that makes it go down. You know, it's like the spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. These balls work excellent. They, they boost your energy levels instantly. And, and they're great for working out because like they're this big and you get mass, maximum protein, maximum energy, minimal digestion. And as you drink water, because there's chia seeds in it and flax seeds in it, it expands a little bit. So like it can go a long way and last a long time. So these are like two of my favorite products and my lemonade, which you've seen me drinking. And then uh, when we get into the food spectrum, uh, I love I love our kale chips. Our chia flax chips are really unique. They're, they're digestive crackers. So if somebody's like trying to lose weight and they want to get their omega threes up, these crackers are phenomenal. Um, they have, they're tasty. It's not quite a Dorito, but it's on the spectrum of a Dorito. It's, it's just, um, it's a crunchy chip that has soup and chia and flax. Uh, no, it's completely paleo and it may even be keto. I don't, I, I don't, I haven't thought about that, but it's probably keto as well that, as there's no sugar in it. Then our Mexican taco, that's on the food spectrum. Our Mexican taco is like flies off the shelf. That's like our number one selling item. It's a purple cabbage leaf, which has a mushroom, walnut, black rice, sort of meat spread pate, and then cumin guacamole. We put a jalapeno popper in it, which is essentially a jalapeno with cashew nacho cheese that's dehydrated. So it's crunchy and crispy some cilantro and tomatoes on it. It's delicious. We make paleo pizza crackers. And on that, we'll also make a, a pesto or a macadamia pizza. So that, and that's like eating like a crunchy salad. Like essentially everything we do is like a version of a salad, but it's like, we make it to taste like a little bit like a junk food. And then the pizza cracker is like really crunchy and crisp. And then that we put like, you know, a thick, like gooey pesto on it. And that, that's like delicious and salty and savory and oily. And like, you get all the, you get all the sensations that you want to get out of something uh, with a macadamia cream. Yeah. Well, the, we had, we tried like all of those foods. They were delicious. Oh yeah. We have superfood nachos, superfood nachos, which is a vitamin B hack. So instead of going to the state fair and you're like weighed down with some processed crazy cheese, we make a, a B vitamin hack, a cashew nacho cheese that's digestive. So it's like working on your digestion. And essentially all the food is like designed to be like, you're on a cleanse, but you're eating junk food. Like even our pies like have dietary fiber in them. And like, we use a little psyllium husk to help them break down even better. So you're like, you can be on a pie cleanse, literally. I keep hearing you say it's good for your digestion. It's good for your digestion. Would you say that these foods go through someone quicker than other foods typically? 
Oh, um, no, not like that. Not like that. It's not like okay. oh, what you got to run to the bathroom or something. Not like that. No. Um, what I, the reason I'm saying good for digestion is that things need to be broken down. So a lot, like people are eating salads and they can't digest it because the kale isn't like chopped up properly and there's not oil and salt and lemon to like actually cook the kale. So, um, and then like things aren't necessarily paired, right? Like you, you really shouldn't be eating bread and meat, right? That's like, they don't go together. They're two totally different foods. And so um, when we talk about this, it's clean digestion. So it's like, there's a lot of fiber and things like actually work well together to break down. But again, we're a lot of our cuisine is nuts. So we're not talking fast digestion. We're talking slow released energy and that that's potent. So we have really potent nutrient rich food. Like, you know, nuts are very dense in calories. And so you don't need a lot. So like a lot of times you go and you need this giant plate of food to get to, to make your body feel full. And like, sometimes we give like somebody that orders like 20 things, like a little salad and they're like, they're, they finish that salad and they're done. You know, it's like, I'm full. Thank you. I finally got nutrients, you know? So like nutrients go a long way. And the way we, we, the way we prepare things is what makes them easy for digestion and what goes with them together. So we put things together that we're like assisting the digestion. Like there's enough lemon, there's enough, there's enough acid, there's enough um, fiber, there's enough, whatever it is that we're making there. It's like, we have seeds in it. We have I don't, I don't know any other example, but like our pasta is made out of zucchini. You're not getting this like dense, like heavy gluten thing going in or even brown rice. Like we're doing zucchini and like the sauce is good enough to cover it. You know, the sauce has to be right. I mean, we still have so many questions and I know we need to start to wrap this up. We want to make sure our listeners know, especially those in, in Minneapolis, not only where they can find you, but like, what are your offerings? We know you do these cleanses and you've got this event space that you're currently sitting in right now, I believe, and how you intend to use that, you know, going forward into the future. So um, right now I'm actually in my apartment, but I have an event space oh. that has a library <laughs> that looks a bit like this. And um, yeah, so the, so that, that space is um, in North Loop and we we do classes there. We do private classes and we do private events where people can cook their dinner and then serve it with their friends. So it, it seats like about 20 people. And then um, right now I'm working out of a test kitchen, which we're moving out of that. So that that's changing just a little bit. And um, so there's some exciting things coming up, which I can't announce yet. But on the 22nd, we're rolling out food inside a French meadow. Um, so we'll have packaged food. We'll offer our pizza and our tacos and some of our snacks, our drinks, our chia porridges for breakfast, our jam dot cookies. Like, so there'll be a nice variety in French meadow in the front cooler. And then right now you can get our drinks, three or four drinks, I think four drinks now at 44th in France. We're moving into the two protein drinks there and we'll still keep maybe the aloe and the lemonade or the aloe and the shizzle or the lemonade and the shizzle. Anyways, there's four drinks at 44th in France. We get, we're in Soka at the Four Seasons. It's a, it's a, um, a coffee house um, that's attached to the new Four Seasons Hotel. And it's gorgeous, by the way. You need to go check this place out. There's a tree in it and there's like all kinds of delicious stuff. And and if you don't know 44th in France, they have the best cheese and the best snacks and like things to make up, touch your stuff up. And then, um, and then we're going to roll out at People's Organic in the airport coming up really soon. So at the airport, um, Concourse E, we're going to have our drinks and our, our unicorn balls. So that's right now what I can announce. And then in about a month, we're rolling out the packs. So we'll have the cleanse packs and then we'll have um, preset packs and then also an opportunity for you to build your own pack. And then at between 150, uh, they start at 150 and they go to like 300. And these are like week packs or like three day packs or however you want to design it. But between 150 and 300, we charge you 25 to bring it to your house and over 300, we just bring it. Um, and then there's a window delivery window. And if you want to pick something up like that, you can, you can do that as well. So um, uh, those will roll out um, just about mid-March. And this is in Minneapolis, by the way, this is in Minneapolis. Our listeners, Sorry. I know we do yeah. have listeners all over the world. Are there options for people outside of Minneapolis as well? 
Yes. Outside of Minneapolis, um, we ship packs. So we have um, special snack packs and um, we ship little teas that you can that you can brew at your home. We ship um, nut milk bags so you, and with a recipe to make oat milk so you can make it in your house. We also ship our chia flax chips, our paleo pizza crackers, obviously our unicorn balls. There's a bunch of other crackers and uh, jam dot cookies. So there's a number of things for that's that's like on our website as shippable. And you can just click on that and then it'll take you to anything we can ship anywhere in the US. Unfortunately, we're not able to ship our, most of our fresh stuff right at this point yet. And website, you want to share with us what your website is? Yeah. So the website is um, vitalistsuperfood.com. And that's uh, there's no um, S on food. So vitalistsuperfood.com. And you can get there through vitalistfood.com as well. But vitalistsuperfood.com. All of our Instagram is at vitalistsuperfood. And you can see like some of our pretty stuff and pictures and, and whatnot. And let's kind of get a view of what our products look like. That's great. And we'll link all that up in the show notes too. So you peppered in so much information today, Sarah, you know, for those of our listeners out there who may have experimented with eating more raw plant-based vegan or not, what like tips, you know, maybe one or two suggestions or things that you do in your daily life that someone could implement immediately to start being open and exploring this way of eating. Okay. Um, the first few things I would say is I would get Dr. Jubb's life food recipe book. You know, that's a, that's a great thing to do. And then, you know, if you really w- would like to have a little bit more elevated cuisine in your life, I recommend our bases, like our crackers, really, uh, the crackers are like a nightmare to make. They really are. I don't know how else to tell you. And so you could immediately have an upgrade in your, in your kitchen by buying our crackers. And then if you get the recipe book, you can like learn to make some sauces and things to put on it and then chop up your veggies or your chicken or your meat or whatever it is that you do and put, use our crackers. Like the crackers and the chips are like the hardest thing to implement into a diet and, and they're gluten-free, dairy-free, paleo, easy to digest, benefit your micro, you know, microbiome. So like that's, that, that would be like my number one tip is like, get this life food recipe book, start digging into it, learning a little bit about how to work with your blender and and work with your blender more. You know, uh, the more we blending food is like chewing it 300 times and you get all the fiber and no digestive worries. Like it just kind of goes in and does its job and leaves your body easily. Liquid uh, before it, lunch. Liquid before yeah. lunch. Liquid before lunch. You know, liquid as well. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> using the blender, you could fast for for months without having an issue. Months, literally months. And especially if you had our crackers. Like, so if you're on a healing journey or you're on a journey where you just want to get rid of like some of the gluten in your life, I would I would think about moving towards like gluten free crackers. And we we really make some of the best that are in the world. Really. Um, I, I go around trying them and trying to find better and make ours better. And we really do have some of the best in the world for what, for what they are. You may like the taste of a plain rosemary cracker better, which I might too, but you can't get what we're doing out of that. And so if you're looking for something that's micronutrient rich, is organic, is non-GMO, is gluten-free and elevates your nutrition in your life and your family's life, our crackers are kind of like the top of the notch. And then if you want a good snack. Our unicorn balls are phenomenal. <laughs> so, but uh, the big tip is baking soda with with citric acid, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. Electrolyte lemonade, which you can find in that recipe book, and I gave you kind of the baseline of the ingredients, and you can kind of work with that in your own blender. And I would, you know, as often as you can go gluten free, go go gluten free. It really makes a difference. It's a huge, it's a huge hack. And then whenever somebody asks me, what's one thing I can do right away every day that's easy for me to do where I'm at, and I say eat a salad. One salad a day. It's not hard. You can get it done, even if it's small. Get some get some enzymes into your system as much as you can, and and a little berries like berries for breakfast. A little berry sprinkle. It doesn't have to be too many. You can just have a berry sprinkle because like a berry has seeds. Those are wonderful tips. I love all those tips, and I think they're all really doable. I'm wondering like how many unicorn balls? They're little. Like I we had them. They're so tasty. Like, do you eat one? Do you eat four? Like, what what do you recommend? Yeah. Um, We sell them now in serving packs of two. And and they they look a bit like, this is what they look like. So we have, um, so they're like this. And this is the variety pack that has two of each. We also do it in CBD and we're launching a THC version, but this is um, essentially, this is what we sell. And, and, and it's, two, it's a two pack and two is perfect. Uh, sometimes people like to eat one before they work out and one after or two, 
two is really like th- this size. It's it's approximately one ounce um, and it's and it's very nutrient dense. So two is a perfect, really a perfect. And it's like kind of in lieu of eating a protein bar, you're eating something that's completely natural, has seeds, gives you omega-3 fatty acids, easy to digest. Uh, like the peanut butter fig, figs are rich in calcium. So you get calcium, like the combo pack is like really ideal. It has magnesium, calcium, zinc, you know, it's just like go down, the, we're checking Amazing. And I know you have a special offer. Oh, I do have a special offer. If you order online or if you order from Uber Eats or you order from me directly, uh, code unicorn ball, hashtag unicorn balls. Um, we will give you a free unicorn ball. And probably if you order from Uber Eats or something from me, we'll probably give you a drink as well or something special if you say that code. And if you wanted to do a consultation, we'll give you a percentage off. And or if you wanted to order a pack, we'll also give you a percentage off. So yeah, if you use code unicorn balls, we know that we know that you're our friend and you came through these two and we'd love to give you extra support and care and some free stuff. And so for all you local listeners out there, especially we know we have a lot of like busy moms, busy parents, just people are just running around and don't know what to grab when they start to get hungry in the afternoon. Highly recommend having some of these unicorn ball packets with you so you can grab them in between meals or even as like, your breakfast, you know, I mean, there's really no time of day that you can't enjoy a unicorn ball. So, and the kids, the kids really love the kale chips, which is like surprising to me. Like I send them to my niece and nephew and they just like dump it in their mouth. So like the kale chips are a really big hit they're, and they're pretty dense and they're, they're like, really good. Yeah. So that's yeah. another good, like hack for the, for the moms out there. These kids actually like kale chips, which is great. That's awesome. Thank you so much. You have given us so much to think about. And I feel like I learn. I love when we have a guest on and I learn something new and I definitely learned a lot. So thank you, Sarah, as we wrap up this conversation, one thing we like to ask all of our guests is what does the art of living well mean to you? That's, that's a great question. I I think for, for me, um, the art of living well would probably have three pillars and one would be pay attention to what you bring into your body uh, what you're consuming. So um, one of my teachers put it this way, uh, wisdom is control of our appetite. And that I, that means what we drink, what we eat, what we say, what we think, what we allow to consume our body. So I, I think control of your appetite, uh, whatever that might be. And then, you know, with that, uh, so number two would be sort of the choices we make about what we actually eat, what our nutritional choices are and where, wherever we can do better, we should do better and, and also be allowing and understand that we do have our favorite foods. We do have the things we like to eat, but how can we elevate it a little bit anywhere we can? Can we do it better four days a week? Can we do it better one day a week? Can we do it better just for lunch? Can, what, what can we do better? And then number three for me would be um, active. How active are we staying in our community, in our body, in our home? How how alive are we? And you know how how is the mantra? I love my life running through it. And can we, you know, so uh, actively practicing that and for and and that also to me means you know moving the body, walking, hiking, rollerblading, swimming dancing, putting on music, standing up, not sitting at our desk every you know hour we're up, we take a 10 minute break to move our body around. Can we just do a push up here or there? Can we do a couple squats when we walk to the bathroom? You know, what can we do to just get a little bit more activity in and keep the body alive and pumping and reminded that we love it? I love that response you had. And just how you said, ask yourself, like, how alive are we or how alive are you? And then what can you do to sort of like elevate, you know, some of these choices when it comes to food and nutrition or and movement, I was going to say. And even just as simple as paying attention to what you're putting in your body, right? Like pay attention. Or bless yes. it. Bless the thing. Bless the thing. Like, oh my gosh, I've been given this gift of this meal for easily, you know, like it's so easy for us to eat. And, you know, just taking the time to like actually be aware of that. And then, you know, like on the consumption level, like what are we reading even, you know, it's like, can we get more information about what's good for us? You know, just, I, I think that's like, those are my pillars. Yeah. They're wonderful pillars and great reminders for everybody. So thank you for sharing. Thank Absolutely. you for having me here with you today. It's like such a blessing and, and um, you, you two are just such inspiring women and I love what you're up to and you really well, we love what you're up to too. Wow. Yeah. You really define <laughs> the art of 
really well. And I love that about you. When I met you, it was, it's so refreshing when somebody matches what they're doing, you know, and I, and I really loved that about the two of you that you really embody the art of living well. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Right back and we're you. excited. <laughs> yeah. Right back at you, but we're excited to come in, you know, into the new space and for local people out there, you know, stay tuned. We may be in that space at some point as well, just to, to hang out with Sarah and kind of see what's cooking. So yeah, let's collaborate and please come by French Meadow after the 22nd and try some of our food. And maybe we'll do a couple little fun tastings there over that course of the, the two weeks when we put it in. So yeah, we hope to see you at French Meadow. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye. 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 Bye.